There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. It's time for Friday Reads. This is going to go up a little bit late because I spent half the day reading. So I'd have more to tell you about. So because I did that, I spent a good, to get a good six hours or so, so in, I have now finished four books. I uh, really wanted to get these four finished. And I don't like the way that sounds, to wanting to get them finished. I luxuriated in them. I savored them. And I wanted to finish today so that my... Currently, reading pile is down to now, I don't know, 14 or 13, or I'm not sure what it is, but it's significantly down from 18. So, let me start by telling you what I finished. I did finish this two story collection by Yuko Tsushima of Dogs and Walls, and unfortunately, the second story, well, I would say the second story was a, a bit better than the first one. The first one was pretty bad. The second one, the title story of Dogs and Walls, was more successful but got completely waylaid at the end. So based on these two stories, I think Tsushima is not a short story writer. She is a fabulous... Do we have a word for a person who writes novellas? Novellaist? N more of a novelist than a short story writer. I have now had my th running theory, on tested theory, tested that you're either a, a good short story writer or a good novelist, never both, with the... Edward P. Jones experience both his short stories and his novel were stunning. These were considerably less than stunning and I finished them. Enough said. The next two were both five-star reads for me. This is the Scottish novel The White Bird Passes by Jesse Kesson originally published in the late 1950s I believe in Scotland. I don't remember that Mel of Mel's Bookland Adventures specifically recommended this book in one of her videos, but she certainly raved about Jessie Kesson, and based on that, I got this. I think this was her debut, and I loved it. It's an autobiographical story about a young woman, Janie McVean, growing up in the shady area of a small city in Scotland way back in the day, early 20th century. I don't know the maybe the 19-teens, 1920s, I don't think we ever find out exactly, but around that era, and her mother was a, a prostitute and there was no father around, and young Janie makes the best of a, a less than desirable backdrop for her childhood until she is taken by the, the social workers or whatever they would have been at that time to, to an orphanage, and it's about her coming of age, and it was so well done. I loved the writing and I loved all the Scottish words in here, kept me going to the dictionary, and the relationship between mother and daughter was intensely and complicatedly rendered. I loved their relationship. I loved the kind of young woman that Janie turned into. And near the tail end of my reading of this novel, I did look up some biographical stuff about Kesson. And yes, this is very autobiographical. And I want to read more Jessie Kesson and also a biography of her. I don't know that I'm going to do a full review. I think I've said just now what I would say, but I do recommend this very highly. Loved it. And I also, just about an hour ago, finished this slim collection of selected poems of Evan Boland. I'm not a poetry reader, and I probably missed the deep meaning of quite a few of these, but I also did really take my time with these, and I found that I was able to sink into them more if I read them aloud to myself. And uh, th this is just amazing poetry. This is a fairly early selected poems. When was it published? 1989, so she had a, a lot more to say poetically after that until her passing just a few weeks ago, and I want to read uh, much more. I don't know how to talk about poetry, so I'm just going to read you one of the short ones. Some of my favorites in here were about works of art, and so I would bring up the painting on my screen and then read it and look at the picture, and, and that was really quite a lovely experience, so I'm going to give you the same experience. The poem is called... On Renoir's The Great Pickers. I think the actual painting has a longer title, but basically. So here is the painting, and here is the very short poem. They seem to be what they are harvesting. Rumps, elbows, hips clustering plumply in the sun, a fuss of shines whining from the ovals of their elbows. The brush plucks them from a tied vine. Such roundness, such a round vintage of circles, such a work of pure spheres. Flesh and shadow mesh inside each other, but not this one, this red-headed woman. Her skirt's a wave gathered to the weather. Her eyes are closed. 
Her hands are loosening. Her ears are fisted in a dozed listening. She dreams of stoves, raked leaves, plums. When she wakes, summer will be over. I love that. And yes, just about 45 minutes ago, I finished Sally Rooney's Normal People. And I'm still going to keep you in suspense because I just filmed my little reaction video. It's kind of a review. So it will be launched later tonight as well. Stay tuned. Oh, the drama. So that's what I finished. If you hear the music, that's the 5 o'clock bell that's the signal for children they must go home for dinner so it's five o'clock i usually have my friday reads published by about now but this is just uh, no bales but i decided to put this i moved this out of the bail folder and put it into the on hold folder evanfield by rachel ferguson i bailed on this just a couple weeks ago and leah finished it and she thought it was really good the ending kind of redeemed it and i think that if i read this at a much slower pace i would enjoy it so not anytime soon, but I will pick it up. I do hope to pick it up again before the end of the year and, and proceed with it at a slower pace. In fact, I did have one bail I almost forgot to tell ya. I bailed on the audiobook of The World Without Us by Alan Weissman. I'm sorry about Springathon. I never did find a nonfiction book I could get along with and well enough to finish. So I told you when the last time I mentioned this book that it started out fascinating and the chapter or chapters about New York and how New York would start to disintegrate almost immediately because of all the water underneath the city and how once human life vanished, that would be a very rapid process. That was just uh, incredibly fascinating. And then I, I never was interested in anything else after that. I think I did 40% of it on audio and I barely could focus on anything, any of the details. They did a sim He did a similar chapter or chapters on Istanbul and I didn't care. I mean, it was just more examples of the same process so yeah i got it i got it so it's like most nonfiction, and i'm not poo-pooing people that read a lot of nonfiction. if you are interested in a lot of things then nonfiction is good i'm only interested in a very short list of things so my nonfiction is literary biography and that's some history this the book review in the new yorker would have been enough or the chapters on new york city were enough the rest of it i didn't care i gave up so that happened. I have only started one book, thank God only one, and I told you I would be starting it. This work of Canadian history, Clearing the Plains by James Daschuk. Disease, Politics of Starvation, and the Loss of Aboriginal Life. And it hasn't even shown up on my Goodreads yet because I'm still on the introduction, which has Roman numeral pagination. So until I get to chapter one, it's not showing up. But I am almost through the introduction, and it's academic writing, but it is definitely grabbing my interest. And I've already added so many books to my TBR from books that are mentioned in the introduction. And the histo histo historiographical approaches that he's taking issue with and is going to be adopting to talk about the way that epidemics uh, affected the indigenous people's history uh, even bef uh, before colonial contact, during, and how colonialists, the white bastards, manipulated it and actually used it as a weapon of terrorism to help clear the plains. It's going to be inc an incredible read, I think. And this is the buddy read with Jay Shea. We have yet to check in. We're going to check in early next week on the introduction in Chapter 1. And for those of you who don't know... You should know that Karen of Run Right Reads, and uh, I'm not sure of the other booktubers' real name, but Comfy Cozy Up, are sponsoring a readathon called Caribathon. It starts June 11th and goes until the 20th. I'm going to participate as much as I can. I'm a little busy and overcommitted in June, story of my life, but I do want to use that as a, an excuse to finally get to this. Here Comes the Sun by Nicole Dennis Ben, a Jamaican novel that I have long wanted to read and finally got a copy of. And I'm going to start, the, even though the Caribathon doesn't start for another 10 days or more, uh, I don't care about the date so much as I, I want to read this novel this month. And I will be doing a few other smaller things for Caribathon. Can you guess what those might be? But this one for sure. And the semi-final round of the Book 2 Prize starts on June 1st, and I am one of the judges for that round only, just like I did that semi-final round last year. So I don't know yet which six books that... Did we just have an earthquake? No, I put my hand down on the desk, and that made my 
plastic clamp tripod clampy thing jiggle so no no earthquake i don't think <laughs> um but i will be starting at least two maybe three of those right out of the gate so i'll have and i i will tell you which ones i'm reading and when i finish them but of course i'm my reactions to them, ratings, reviews, are all embargoed until the end of July sometime. So, looking forward to getting to that. I've done a fairly good job of finishing a bunch of books to make room for that, because that will be my primary focus for the next couple months. So my Friday reads might be a little bit slim, although I've got, you know, a dozen other books that I'm going to be reading and finishing up, but hopefully not starting very much else for the next while. Personally, I am confused about the fact that Japan seems to have dodged a bullet. I did some very ranty commentaries in some Friday reads some weeks ago about how screwed up they were in the, the political aspect, the government, the politicians, they did botch everything that they did. But Japan is a very bureaucratic state, and I was vaguely aware before this that it doesn't seem to matter who's, which political party's in power, the bureaucracy does what the bureaucracy wants to do, and that may have saved us, because whatever it was they did, kind of ignoring what the politicians did or didn't do, they just implemented things, and egregious screw-ups aside, they did contact tracing really well, didn't do mass testing, and the Japan numbers are a fraction of what they were in, in other countries, including, you know, China. We're, we're close to China and stuff. And so the state of emergency is finished, and I am slowly re-entering society. Uh, most of my work will stay online in June. Most of my lessons will stay video internet-based Zoom lessons or whatever, but a few of them are going to start as soon as next Monday to go back into the physical classroom. And yes, I have now been thoroughly convinced, especially because of the Japanese experience, that masks make all the difference. So I will be wearing masks all the time, and um, uh, fingers crossed that everything goes well. But that's a little update with that. All right, that's what I got. What have you got? Thanks for watching.